I got to be honest with you. I'd rather get beat up than win a fight. I can tell by the eyes when he's going to throw a punch. Like, why can't the horn just be a little more gentle? Not only did yeah. she not recognize me, she was cunty towards me. Hollywood makes movies for me. Get your own VCR. <laughs> I've highly underestimated how quick a fight is when you don't know how to fight. And punch my girlfriend in the face. Free meat. Yeah, free meat. That's up. That's what's up, bitch. That's not comedy. Welcome to the show. I am that Chris Gore. This is Pod Crash. This is the show where you get to hear me as a guest each week on a different podcast. You get to discover new shows. I get to talk about a variety of topics. This week, I appeared on a podcast called BertCast. And if you know anything about BertCast, it's hosted by a guy named Bert Kreischer, who is an amazing comedian. And uh, we will get to that later. I also have another amazing comedian here with me, uh, sitting in for the wraparounds today, uh, TJ Chambers. Hello. Welcome to the show. Uh, well, thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Glad to be here to talk about Burt Cast. That's uh, and the comedy scene and the comedy scene in right. general. Yeah, right, right. Well, you're a comedian from you're from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, more or less. Yeah, that's that's my college age background. So. That's your ASU. Anything before college, let's just forget that it ever happened. <laughs> right, right. That's pretty much what happened to me in college because I I forgot about the past. Exactly. And then, and so we I, we met in I don't know if we met from the comedy world. I don't remember. Yeah, a little bit. Well, let's see. There was a Sundance run in or two, um, but then uh probably a convention, I think uh a WonderCon nerdery was happening. Oh, I love WonderCon Nerdery. Oh, yeah. that's right. It was WonderCon. It was WonderCon. Uh, WonderCon, the first time they did it in Anaheim. That's right. Yeah. I, that's that's where we met. And then and then uh, we just sort of bonded on just similar senses of humor, like most comedians do. Indeed, yeah. I, so there's a lot of uh, like uh, sort of basking in the reflection of someone else. Like I laugh at your joke and you laugh at my joke. Now let's be best <laughs> friends. Yeah, and then of course the the, the uh, conversation then devolves into. Do you do you deal with bouts of depression as well? Because I kind of do. That's good. that's where sometimes a lot of comedy comes from. That darkness. Yeah, bouts. I think bouts is even it, it, it. Like if you could adjust the definition of bouts to be like sort of constant and low grade underlying, then I think most comedians do. Yeah. Well, I'm in. I'm in that. Um, I'm in that disappeared mode. You're in a bout dis- right now. Oh, I'm right at this moment. Okay. Yeah, I'm in yeah, the yeah. disappeared mode. Yeah. It's it's the disappeared mode is like like you're so depressed you just don't want to. You're kind of in like stall, even though I'm like I'm working on a lot of things, right? You but know, you're like a shadow person, just kind of. Uh... In a way, yeah, sort of. Uh, you know, I, I just dealing with sort of the the echoes of a, a, the longest breakup of my of my relationship career. Yeah, if I that's why I'm gonna refer to it now as my relationship career. Relationship career. Yeah, my yeah. Rela- relationship what are, career. What are your stats, lifetime? Uh... Lifetime <laughs> stats. Uh, let's go. Let's see. How, how many rebounds? How many blocks? <laughs> I feel like they're, all these terms could work. I feel like they're all rebounds. Now. Yeah, you know, like yeah. every relationship now is a rebound. Like you're getting over the last one while you're, and then and then suddenly you're like, well, you're like, well, you're not really a rebound. I'm actually genuinely, you know, into you. And then it's right. It's so like, yeah. when does that ever end? And the half life on a rebound, I think, is kind of a dump. People try to put a label on what was or wasn't a rebound, but. You can crawl inside your own head about a relationship you had seven or eight years ago, right? And that could still affect what you're doing now, which could still be a rebound. It's it's more of a a rebound is not the one singular bounce back from a relationship. It's the bungee of the accumulated shit of all your relationships up to then. <laughs> in my humble opinion, it's like a rubber band and the elasticity. This is what I find like on a re- like a like a bad pair of like. Uh, uh, I do wear yoga pants. Right, right, right. Well, they're not. Yeah. What do they don't? They don't call them yoga pants for dudes. What do they call them? That's, what are those? Those just sweatpants? Sweatpants. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, why did I not think of that? Such is the level of athleticism exhibited by Chris Gore. Like, <laughs> exactly. Sweatpants? Are they sweat? What are yes, these sweatpants. of which you speak? Are they the tearaway ones? Like NBA pajama style, bottoms? Just pajama, pajama bottoms. bottoms. Yeah, uh, pajama yeah. bottoms. Okay. Oh my god! Thank God I have the pop filter on here. I said pajama bottoms. Yeah. So I, it's the elasticity gets like after a while of right. being stretched and it's stretched and used and used right. over You're and over not again. Bound, it's never. It's it con- starts to it's loose. Back. Yeah. It's loose. Yeah. They're, those those uh, pants are falling off you right. and tripping you up. This we're not talking about uh, 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 pajama bottoms now. Uh, if you've been paying attention, I don't know if you guys followed that if, metaphoric if you, meta- skip oh. through the land of Chris Gore's mental state. Oh. Where we are now, the pants oh. are real. 
Ooh, yes, yeah. absolutely. It's the, it's the, yeah, the elasticity is, it's crumbling. It's, cr- it's that crumbling rubber right. that, that oh, like is yeah. fraying oh, that. up. Yeah. And but then it's like, but you know, I don't want to throw those pants away because what if I need to paint something? Right. I need to wear those crappy uh, ones with the elasticity. Just I'm going to have to like t- tighten that I, thing so it doesn't fall down. I assume that in, now where we're at in the analogy, paint something means fuck something. Right, right, probably. right exactly. Well, what if I need to call pants to come over right. at one o'clock in the morning after I came home. From Not going to happen. Not yeah. going to happen. All right. Not, well, you look I mean, like that... shit. You look terrible. <laughs> so. so we were talking about the comedy scene uh, here because um, I would say that it's not in this. I'm just being realistic. I think we're up and coming. Uh, there, Are we up and coming? There's some talk of a is, second is it, boom, kind of. Uh, right. You know, uh, people who I got in, obviously, after the, the 80s. Right. But it did seem like a heyday when, you know, clubs were full across the country because people in Wichita, that's what they did on a weekend. You know, right. They, there was no YouTube. There was no whatever. It's, hey, let's just go to the comedy club and see who, who's going to be there. So it seemed like anybody, and I've heard people actually say this who were around then, anybody who could string together a reasonable half hour set. Would just get on. Could, would, would just get on and was having a pretty good a pretty good time of it. This is there my was, this is my goal. There was coke and women and, <laughs> and you know t- they were living high on the hog. Well, I, I have no idea what that because I haven't been in the scene very long. It's really only been yeah. like you know three years. And we all so we all definitely call it the scene. So do keep, we call so it keep, the scene? No, not at all. No, I, what do I? I see. I get everything wrong. Yeah. I can't get the. Well, no. I mean, I think that's the thing is it's close enough to hipsterdom in a way that there's no. There's, it would be uncool to have a name for what's happening now. This, see, speaking of hipsterdom, I, I, I don't know if I regret not having facial hair. You, you are facial. You're one yeah. of the fa- you're a facial hair American. I just trimmed uh, uh, pretty pretty significantly, but yeah, it was we were at a um, a pool party with a bunch of comedians the other day, and I noticed that even as I tre- as I trod water, uh-huh. as water was trod, yes. my beard was still in the water. There's not a level of treading water for me that right. could keep my beard afloat and dry and hence time for a trim it looks it looks good but if you're one of those people that needs to shave like myself Mm -hmm. and you're a budget-minded person in that regard uh let me talk let me tell you about dollar shave club yeah dollarshaveclub.com it's it's um high quality razors at at a a low price uh if you sign up for dollar shave club you'll be supporting the show so go to dollarshaveclub.com slash chris get your high quality razors delivered on time inexpensive uh it's it's amazing. I signed up myself. I signed up myself to support the show. Yeah. So go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Chris to get your high quality razors if, TJ, you decide to change your look. So, now and you know I, and do. I do trim. And I have to say that in as much as I... So you do need razors. I, of course. I Dollar do need razors. Club. And I did previously mention that you look like <laughs> shit. And this is not a joke. You look like shit, but... V- the the one part of you that is still holding up Sterling well, very smooth face. Look at my look very at clean shave, smooth. no nicks, no cuts, smooth. So whereas Creamy. the rest of you is just a crumbling mass of uh, of like a quivering sad man, your your face area is on point. Thank you, Dollar Shave. Nobody's like, well, just just to be clear, you're talking about my mental state, not physical. Because I actually I you feel, actually you you feeling okay. Here's the worst thing with me now, like being like single, is all the married women. That are flirting with me. Yeah. This, I, this, this disturbs me. This is now like a trend. This is a trend of married women who I have now discovered, and I don't use that. There's actually a Facebook, uh, there's an app, a Facebook app called Bang With Friends. Oh, oh great. Okay. Bang, yeah, Bang they're, With they're Friends. Not no, I'm serious. Be, they're not, Zynga's not shutting them down anytime soon. No, but so. Bang With Friends is you sign up for it, and then you, it's an app that you can go through your Facebook friends and decide, I'd like to bang you. I've never been... I am not the kind of person that there's a lot of people that are like, oh, you know, a friends with benefits. I can I've never right, been able right. to mentally do that. Yeah. I cannot do that. But um, what I've discovered is for uh, several women, I'm embarrassed to say, that I am their, quote, free pass. Really? How am I to take this? You're on a laminated card somewhere in someone's, in someone's coach purse. She has a little, who, it's, we got Daniel Craig. We've got right. uh, maybe Ryan Reynolds circa 2006 and Chris Gore on the free pass. Is it sad that I would just rather jerk off the porn than engage in all of the think? I just no, that's me, not. Are you saying so? You're saying I'd rather jerk rather off the like, porn than fuck a married woman? That's probably pretty good. That's you think okay. that's actually good because you're because you're not ruining someone's life and marriage by jerking I, off the porn. So it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing that you're abstaining from uh, <sighs> using your significant power to potentially. Uh, you know, ruin some relationships out there, and that's 
I like to think that you're I don't doing think, it for higher I, purpose. I, I think in the cases of some of these women, it's not about ruining. I actually right. think it's about enhancing something. But or, I'm just yeah, a tool. They, yeah. I'm a human dildo, is what it is, for, for, their, for, their to, for them to get off on the idea that, you know what I'm saying? It's right. like, I, I don't want, I really want to go into detail well, about this, because now, now I'm getting embarrassed, which happens... Very rare times on this podcast. Right, right. Very rare. So, wow. But I'm going. But I'm going. For you th- to actually work your way into some level of embarrassment. I, but I, you know, the thing is, my emotions uh, lately have just been incredibly raw, which is why it's been difficult to do this show. I'm getting. I'm getting a lot of the cases of the feels. Oh yeah. Oh the yeah. The feels. Yep. Have, have we heard, have we heard of the feels? The cold pricklies. The feels. Is that, that what they the, call cold pricklies as cold, well? Cold pricklies, as opposed to warm fuzzies, which I think was more. Of a way to try to explain to children uh, bad feelings right. that might come from you know a bad uncle. Never. All right. I do want. I want to roll back a little bit to this Facebook app. Bang, Bang with, with friends. friends. Yes. Yes. Because I've thought of one, and I'm not sure if this is the way to do it. But what? I, and there's so many of the things out there. What, what's that? Ashley Madison or the yes. for married people or whatever. What would be an interesting idea is if you could scroll through your Facebook friends, click ones that you were interested in banging. That, That's what Bang with Friends that, does. So does it work so that that information does not get sent to them until the they click on you all? That's exactly so how it works. With, okay, that's, that's exactly how it works. Right. In my head, so I invented something that was already invented. if you actually go to the app, it'll right. show you which of your friends are signed up for it. Okay. Well, what even, I was shocked that, to learn, uh, yeah. What I was shocked to learn, there were only two women on there. Right. Uh, one that I know fairly well. Mm. The others were all dudes. Some of them married dudes. I was a little, it's just, it just, I just go like, ah, nah, don't, no, no. Well, the thing is, is I almost wonder then, I mean, they, did they do it as a joke with their wife sitting right there? You're not making much of an attempt to cover your tracks. That's exactly what they did. No, look, I have have a theory. This is what's going to happen because I, I have a goal. I have a goal. I would like to be in a committed relationship and married in the next two years. Wow. I would like to be. This is this is my goal because. Are, are, is the is it the same woman or you want to be in a committed relationship, <laughs> comma and married? Yeah, for well, the next two yeah. years. I want to. Yeah, I, look. I just this has been my goal actually since I survived my divorce. I've wanted to be in long term committed relationship with a woman married because first I just I just I like first of all I like regular sex. This right is advantages right regular you mean sex as in frequent sex. Yes. In, er, I hate exercise. Occurring with regular intervals. I hate exercise. Okay. Despise exercise with a passion. I hate it. So how do I get exercise? Fucking. Uh-huh. Fucking. Mm-hmm. It's like my abs are never in better shape than when I'm having regular sex. Uh, the second thing is um, there's a theory that it's like, oh, people in men in marriages, they live longer than guys that are single. And the, the misnomer with that is that they're happy. Right. Let me let me let me let me say dispel, my theory. Dispel is. this theory. The, my theory is there's someone to call an ambulance when they. That's right. There's someone to issue. find you when you broke your hip. When you break your hip, right. heart attack, something. Right. Someone could call. So the, you know, what? now another click in the upside. The other thing is, I don't just miss the companionship, the friendship, the cuddling on the couch, right. all that stuff. I like the weirdness that comes with relationships in this way. Let me explain. So like, all right. So t- today we got to go to Costco. We got to go. Oh, I can't go to Costco. You all right? So you go to Costco. I'll stop by Target and get this. Oh wait, I'm I'm got you on the. I'm texted you. Could you get barbecue sauce? Get this. Right. We got to go to your mom's house and go to whatever. It's like, oh great, cool. All right, I'll get that. Oh, so you didn't get the right barbecue sauce. All right, okay, so we're going to your mom's. Oh no, is she still going through that right. thing? Whatever. Oh, it's, oh, your sister's gonna be there. She doesn't. Oh cool. Oh, let's see if we can watch this movie. It's all the busyness of being right. in a relationship. And you like that sort of, because what it sounds like is some of that team dynamic where there's a, little, there's a little bit of like, we're greater than the sum of our parts. Yes, team dynamic. That, right. But still with the, the wacky antics that happen when, you know, you can never perfectly communicate with another person exactly what needs to be done. So there's a little bit of getting in there and grinding it out. Well, it's it's the team thing. It's the sex. It's the it's the partnership. Tax it's breaks. all that. See, now I'm actually getting like all like as I'm saying all this, mm. I'm actually kind of kind of kind of wistful. The feels are coming on. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. the feels are coming on. Yeah. Wait, let's talk. To, let's talk about hey, comedy. Let's that's talk why, about comedy. That's why I had you on this show. Yeah, indeed. I don't know much about, about anything else. Yeah, let's because well, look, you, you are and see what I like about you is because I see a lot of comedy in L.A. and it's a lot of people in their twenties. And to be honest, to 
everyone in their 20s, you know what the fuck you're talking about. Um, you haven't lived enough life. You haven't had enough bad things happen to you, which I think bad things build character. When, right. when something course, yeah. horrible happens to you, right. lesson learned, you survived it. It's like, wow, that, I'm not dead. Yeah, you're calloused over there now. Right, that, right, right. The more interesting comedians to me are the people who have lived a life. Let's 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 look at who they are. You know, the the, the Mark Marins, the Bill Burr, oh, for sure, the the Corolla, the just, deep deep reservoir of things. Pat Oswalt, which to, yeah. Let's go. Let me just you name all the good comedians. They're all thirties, forties, fifties. Right, right. Okay, you well, are in your thirties. I'm in my thirties. Yeah, right. So hopefully, hopefully on that path. What, I bad, suppose. what bad things have happened to you? Oh, geez. You know, it's that funny. Have, that have God, I was doing growth. some horrible interview for a reality show recently, and they were looking for comedians to do like a competition show. And you can tell when they interview for these reality shows that they're prodding you. They, they want to make a story out of you. Right. It's like American Idol, where it's if we can have a girl on who's only got one leg and <laughs> she donated her leg to blind Belgian, you know, nuns or whatever, who knows? And if the leg can sing. Yeah, even then, probably not even better because who cares who can sing in American Idol? <laughs> and so they go, well, what are the, some of the hard things? And you, you feel like an asshole because, yeah, it, like I don't, I don't talk to my father. That's a true thing about my life. Wow. I don't generally. Some of your best jokes, but, are about that. I then I do have a couple of jokes. Do that you, I've, I, do, I don't think I, I've heard them. I actually, do, I have, a, I have a, a bit that all you can find it online um, about it. But that where do you have? Do you have a YouTube? There's some YouTube. Yeah, if you just see TJ, TJ Chambers, Chambers YouTube, you'll TJ you'll probably Chambers. see me doing that bit somewhere. Uh, but it's it's like a cold war. It's a low grade. I didn't have some flame out with my dad. He left my mom and my family when I was fourteen. We talked some. He is he's a, a young child that he's adopted from China, so kind of a new family. And it's one of those. He doesn't really give a shit about what I'm doing. I don't really give a shit about what he's doing. So I kind of feel like a jerk trading on that as a as a like sob story. You know, like what are some of the things you've had to deal with? That's a fact. It's out there. I don't feel like it drives my everyday thing. But if there's humor to be mined from it, you know, a la the Mark Marins or those people. So the, so the line is you'll use it for comedy in your show, but you're not going to use it to get cast on a reality show. Right. I I think that that's a good policy to yeah, go about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I feel like it's different on stage. You, you I mean, you are kind of working some things out, you know? I right. mean, there is sort of a, there is an element of of uh, mass therapy. In, in, you, you know, you're, you're doing therapy in a meetup where y- you are the person that gets to talk the whole time. Right. Which right. is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. And at the end, instead of billable hours, hopefully, you know, you get billed. Or, or bill, you know, you get paid in theory. Right. But I will say that I do feel like in comedy that's also a dangerous line because you, I think you see people who are just there because you hear that thing where people say, oh, man, I'm, I, how'd, why'd you become a comedian? Because there's nothing else I could possibly do. And some of those people are amazing. They're amazing, brilliant comic minds, whatever. I also like that there are people who you see who could do other things, maybe. You know, they're reasonably... Talented, well-adjusted people. You watch a set like they're from, like they're good at crafting. Like they're good at crafting. Yeah, like they they're handy. With, I was referencing uh, myself. Yes, actions. indeed. I know. As you wave <laughs> to a giant wall of crafts that you have built. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there's guys out there. I you know you see uh, Jonah Ray do a comedy set, and you think, man, that guy's really really funny. Like he could he, do search he could commercials be, for search. Yeah, engines. it could be a number of different things. I don't feel like you know he's. Wrapped in a miasma of sadness that can only be worked out on stage. He's just a really fucking funny dude. You know? uh, yeah, although I did hear him on Marin. He was great. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, he's, I mean, there's, you know, I, I, I love Jonah. He is yeah. the one, Jonah Ray is the one that encouraged me to finally do comedy. It was, it was just for me like a series of, like a thing like the universe, like everywhere I go, like just in my career, people be like, yeah, do you do comedy or do you do stand up or have you ever done stand up or why don't you do stand up? To where I'm at freaking Home Depot buying stuff and the girl's like, are you a Comedian? Are you com- yeah. Because all I'm doing is try- I'm trying to get a smile. Why? Why? Because it's less boring than giving someone money and grumbling and walking away. It's right. just like I say something innocuous, and I'm not even making a joke. I'm just being 
establishing a rapport, which is something I just, I feel like it's just sort of good karma in the universe to just like, uh, be good and nice to people and try to... God forbid you make your day interesting and other people's day interesting. We're all humans. We all have to interact with each other. We as well try to make it a little bit fun. Yeah, yeah. So so to where I went to Joe and I'm like, how how do I, because I knew he was doing like the Meltdown show and and, uh, he encouraged me. He goes, well, well, put you on and do a set. Like, why not go? You've been doing TV for like 10 years. It's just like, uh, it's just confidence. You just get on there. Like, you could do it. I mean, just like, so he, he was just like, okay, you know, like, oh yeah, it's like, right, I do live TV and I don't really care. I don't get nervous in front of audiences. Right. Um, I've been telling jokes or stories that I would just tell conversationally for years. So like, how do I develop this into material? And oh, by the way, I just got back from Phoenix, your adopted hometown. Yeah. Oh yeah. Phoenix, Arizona yeah. from the Phoenix Comic Con, which I have to say, thank you. Thank you to everyone at Phoenix Comic Con. Um, amazing. I I don't want to talk. It's it, was, a, it was a burgeoning. They've got a pretty big thing going on. Phoenix Comic Con is it's it's basically the size of WonderCon yeah. uh, currently. Um, but Phoenix Com- Phoenix Comic Con was amazing, and uh, we were supposed to do a pod crash thing there. And I don't want to say it's between it's between me and the audience. We did a special we did a special thing that you'll hear about later. But uh, but I really want to thank that audience. They were just they were freaking amazing. They. Uh, uh, I loved it. It was yeah, fantastic. Well, I mean, it's it's the end of May in Phoenix, so uh, getting people indoors into an air conditioned spot not as hard as you think. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. People just wandering in because exactly. watching Chris Gore do whatever he does definitely better than passing out. I think everyone <laughs> sure. can agree. Why not? Yeah, on That's the a... scale of activities that <laughs> fill my day. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So so uh, Phoenix audiences, uh, th- thank you for that. Um, but we were talking about the the business of comedy also. Like we're we're. I mean, I'm doing this podcast and yeah. Dollar Shave Club being a sponsor. Um, Thanks, DSC. I yeah. acronymed Dollar All Shave that. Club. Yeah, d- yeah, yeah. So uh, don't go to DSC.com. That's probably a totally different thing. Go to DollarShaveClub.com. But we're but. talking about like I do, I have an upcoming comedy album coming out. Yeah, which you'll probably you'll be able to find not right now, but like shortly, it's going to be up on Amazon and iTunes for pre-order called Celebrities Poop. And this is just material I've been working on like for the last. Three years that you'll you'll be able to buy the book or the just the album, right? So different prices for those promotional design, which Prom- well, like you say, introing into the business of comedy and the business right. of all I'm not entertainment doing CDs. these I'm days not doing CDs. is that yeah, yeah you've got you've got to find you got to find an angle at it, which uh, you know is this, is a smart thing there that you've done because well I will see I mean it's just like I just want I was looking at like what people are putting out and it's just a lot of like download it download it I'm like well, I don't yeah. want to just have people download it they can download it and they'll get to listen to some, some stuff but they'll also get like this little like collector book thing. Yeah, collector book thing. Collector book thing. It's it's like a page for page parody of the book Everyone Poops. I, which even if you don't know have kids, you would know that book. I certainly don't have kids, and I have I know the book, and I've seen uh, your your book. The and pages. I yes. was delighted. I was tickled pink. Well, I just I'm doing a, I, I'm adding a track to it. This is the last minute. I'm adding a track to it where I read the book. Oh, children's yeah. children's book style like. Ding. Turn the page. Something it should ab- be pretty fun. It's something about fun. your voice echoing <laughs> in my head reading a children's book. It's gonna be. It's gonna S- be weird. Spines were shivered just now. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, but uh, but you know, like there's a comedian that I know, Justin Warshin, who does the the Dad Podcast. He puts out you know yeah. albums like um, you know one or two a year. And what he'll probably tell you the great ancillary benefit about either putting out an album or putting out. Something that's been recorded and put out there is that it is a great kick in the ass to then develop new material. Yes. Because I do find things, I, I'll sneak in a bit that all of a sudden I realize that's a three-year-old bit because I've never been forced to chuck it because it's never it's not out there in, in some big capacity. So <sighs> I'm it, looking forward to that because I've been telling the same jokes for three years right. in, in different arenas and sort of different... They're almost there. Yeah, they're yeah. almost there. They're buddy. almost there. It's just like, <laughs> eh, this and this. And there's like also yeah. like new stuff where it's just like, ah, I can just throw in this kind of as organic to this thing. But um, but yeah, I do want to just close that and then just sort of document it like it's there. And I feel like the people that discover it there will want to see whatever new stuff because uh, yeah. I'll be going on the road later in the year. I, I'll... I'll talk about so that like later when that's happening. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you can get, you can just go to podcrash.net or chrisgore.com and see what I'm up to. But, uh, but uh, you know, because who knows when people are listening to this. We're recording this, you know, and this is running like, this is, yeah. this is these, Memorial these Day. These ones and zeros ain't going anywhere. This so is, this, yeah, this yeah. is Memorial Day. Yeah. And, and so, 
Um, I mean, we're recording this Memorial Day. It's coming out Memorial Day, blah, blah, blah. But, like, who knows when people listen to it. They may download it mm. when it comes out, maybe two weeks later. You never know. Sometimes you let it age. Sometimes you put right. it on the shelf. You turn right. the bottle from time to time. Right. You know, maybe July is time to listen to this particular episode of Pod Crash. Maybe August. Who am I to say? Now, Celebrity's Poop is, is my, my album. What's, what's, your, what's your album? Are you working on... You got you uh, got a you got to get a name for your album. I, you know, you I, kinda, I do. I don't want to reveal it yet uh, because it's there's you know a, a couple of interlocking parts that will hopefully work out. So uh, just suffice to say, probably around the same time you're you're see, you seeking out celebrities poop. Um, you know, I'll we'll cross promote. We'll oh really? Out there, um, right? my, it's, it'll be I think officially out like right before Comic Con in July. Like like you'll be able to pre order it and then like ju- it's just going to be like maybe two weeks before yeah, Comic Con. Comes out. Well then mine will probably be out three weeks before. <laughs> oh yes, and you'll be full of all the comedy you need by uh, that point. First liar doesn't stand a chance. Yeah, that's the t- so uh, yeah so uh, yeah so it's 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 I guess going through this I'm going through obviously I'm going through some. It's not relationship issues. It's I now have a goal, and I'm not I'm not letting anything stand in the way of that goal. Yeah, you know, uh, the, 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 I'm talking about relationship. Right, right, right. I, yeah, I have a relationship. The MacArthur goal. of like you're like I will return. Uh, yeah, well, to it's a relationship. It's weird with me because I'm very much you know for me to be as much as like if you look at my Twitter feed or Facebook or whatever updates, it seems like wow, Chris, Chris Gore is a, he's, wow that guy's like uh, well because you have a lot of ladies seems, in your. Well, no. It just I have a lot of female friends. Right, I am right. like That's I am mean. like the I am the heterosexual version of the gay friend. That is right. what I, I I am to a lot of women. <laughs> like try on bikini tops, fine. That's great. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm a non man. Look, I, look. As someone also who has female friends. That's true. Yeah, they're important in your life. Indeed. You know. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. It's it's. I have been one of the one of the men on the planet Earth. Maybe it's a rare breed that doesn't want to fuck every girl that I know. Right. I don't. Mm, yeah. I'm serious. So you don't at all. Well, yeah. At all? All right. Sure, I'll go with that. <laughs> sure, at all. To all my female friends listening to this. <laughs> you know, I... I, oh, I you have comments how, on this? How deep do I want to go into Go deep, go deep, go deep. I have this, I have this deep. thing where I say... Go deep! ...that I like... It, it sounds just so, so douchey. I really do, like, love women. I like... Them, I like to be around them. I appreciate. We say women like the the, the gender. entire population. Yes, the all of the them. gender, all of them. Even, shoot, even the ones that are gender identifying as women. I don't care. I don't discriminate. Yeah. They're lovely people, and so yeah, it's it's tough to convince people or to live as if that is the actual truth, and you're not just trying to be uh, a hound who is trying to fuck them. You know what I mean? Because there's a fine line between just, like, I love you and I want you around, and that guy's trying to spend time with every single girl that he sees, you know? Hmm. Well, I feel like being goal-oriented with this, I kind of feel like it's very very much like a, you know, like a thank you. It was good to have met you. I have all the information I need. This was a pleasant interchange. I will keep it in my files. Mm. Uh, I have enjoyed it. But, you know, I go through that evaluation process where because I have such a vivid imagination... In many respects, I have gone. I have done the already. Yeah, I've done it. Like right. I've met her. I'm just like. Right. I'm not talking about. Just, I'm not talking about sexually necessarily. Yeah. Maybe, but like I've gone through all the. No, out. Right. I'm done. You're, you're you know, doing like, a version of like like Pete Sampras would say. You know, before a big tennis match, he literally has already played out every. Okay, I served, and then they returned like this. But he's played the entire match in his head. Right. Which is you know a healthy way to maybe attain victory in tennis. In a relationship, I think that's kind of a bummer. You think it's a bummer? I feel like I feel like it's like uh, the the, the um, you know uh, Christopher Walken's character in Dead Zone when he would shake the hand or touch someone's and, hand right. and, and see, see everything. Play I feel like that's what happens to me with women is, you, is that I'll meet them and just I'm talking about meeting them. Right. So my my dates are actually pretty. I, I, they're kind of I don't want to say they're cold, but they're just sort of like. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm too, th- I'm thinking too much. I, maybe this is my problem. I'm thinking too much. So I'll go and it's just like to shake the hand and then that dead zone, I see everything and then it's just like, ah, no. Right. It, which is the, the long term version of doing another thing that I won't prescribe it entirely to girls do that I hate is that they'll get mad at you 
for something, for, let's say, an opinion that you haven't even espoused yet. Like, they've played out the argument in their head, and now they're angry at you uh. for something that you didn't even do. You know, you can see them get inside their own head. Oh, well, I knew you. If I said this, I knew you were going to say this. Well, but I didn't say that. I didn't say that yet. Oh, you didn't give right. me a chance. Maybe I, I probably was going to say that. Look, I'm the king of being punished for things that, for things I, that like, yeah. I haven't done yet or might do. Right. It's it's yeah. There's definitely when it comes when it comes to male female relationships, I feel like definitely there is an element of men being punished for pre crimes. Yeah, there's right? A, right. There's a Minority Report. Philip K. Dick was. This is what he got bummed out because his girlfriend or wife right got get, and he was like, wouldn't it be great if you could just see all this shit before it happened and, and stop he, it? He made it into a science even, fiction yeah, thing, right. but it was really came from relationships. Pre, yeah. The concept of pre crime came from uh, women accusing him of things he hadn't done. Now yet. is Philip K. Dick balancing a pint of haagen on his lap just sort of bummed out and like well I'll make it about science fiction so no one like, knows how sad I like am like being inside. accused for having sex with someone you've never had sex with never right. had interest in having sex with or like you know just like like I, I feel like with when that sort of green eye is pointed at you it's like it's, you can't win because no matter what you do you are guilty of things that that you you haven't done right. anything of course and even if it's you all, say yeah. you know oh no I would never because of and you list reasons why you never would have done what it is they maybe think you were going to do, even by listing reasons, shows that you thought, thought about, about it. it. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. How did this... I really wanted to have you on here to talk about comedy. I know, and then how, yeah. did I, how did this derail? I, it came... You brought it back a couple of times. Did I bring brought it back? It back. I, I brought it back. But, okay, I'll fold these things kind of back in together. But you were going to get deep for a second. Did you That was deep? as deep as I was no, going to get. Yeah, go yeah. deeper. That's, go no, deeper. No, no, these waters we'll are talk shallow. We'll things because we've had, we've had conversations. That's true. Be- uh, beers have been involved. Uh, but what I will say to tie together... Oh, beer. <laughs> bring it back to comedy a little bit. But still with your relationship thing, what I mm-hmm. do love about, let's call it the comedy scene right now, and any comedians out there listening to this, kudos to you and, and us, pat on the back to us. It, does, it feels like a way more supportive, friendly scene than it has in the past. There's a, a, you know, there's a group of people who don't see it as a zero-sum game. That, you know, your success equals less success for me. Right. Like I think it used to be. And now there's a little bit more of a rising tide lifts all ships. I love that. You know, there's a lot of people doing shows and and everyone just wants things to be good. And recognizes that by being good, it, it kind of is better for all of us. So shout out to all of you who are, who have, I think from the inside, we got in this uh, business and we changed the culture a little bit from the inside. And uh, let's, let's be proud of ourselves. For DJ that. Chamber shout out. DJ Chambers shout out. That's what that was. That was. That's what it was. That was. That's me shouting out other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That was. Yeah. The, that was the shout out. To, but I, I agree with you because there are having done some comedy clubs where you meet a certain type of comedian where it's so dark. Yeah. It's just so right. there's like a darkness and a jealousy and an anger. I've had literally a, old school guys look at me and go like, "Oh, you're doing ten minutes. Well, that's ten minutes that my friend Fred." You know, who used to yeah. open for Rodney Dangerfield isn't getting tonight. So thanks a lot. Good luck. Yeah. I, I feel sad when people are jealous of my TV career. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, wait a second. You're jealous of, uh, yeah, yeah. But, you know. Uh, There's that no matter what. And you know what? Sh- screw it. Since you said shout out, I will even shout out people by name. There are shout a couple out. people. We already mentioned Jonah, who has been, is just is the nicest guy. And yeah. a wonderful oh, hugger. And just, you know, wants everything to be good. Yeah. My pal, Henry Phillips. Uh, have you ever seen his movie, Punching the Clown? Yes. Uh, amazing guy. Yeah. S- you know, just sweet guy who literally will say to you like, hey man, you're a good comic. And let's, you know, let's make things happen. There's uh, uh, people out there, you know, uh, Karen Kilgariff is an amazing writer, Emmy winner, Mr. Show, and will sit down with me and, and talk comedy writing for 20, 30 minutes at a time and happily give, like, of that knowledge rather than say, you know, we're both, I write for TV, she writes for TV. It would be easy to say, well, any advice I give you, you know, we're in kind of the same pool of jobs. But let's face it, we're not in the same pool of jobs. She's <laughs> way better than me. Uh, but, yeah, there's some, some amazing people out there. So kudos to you, people, and keep up the good work. And uh, to any uh, aspiring up-and-coming comics listening to this, stop. Just don't bother. Um, I feel like it's... Uh, I, if I could crush your there. dreams right now... Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to do yeah, that. Yeah, don't do I that. Don't yeah, do come that. on in. Jump on in. The water's fine. But you will see, just like you said, people jealous of your television career. You know, I was... Here's how quickly things can go back and forth in Hollywood. Uh, so I was co-head writer of... Uh, uh, we'll call it that of a network television comedy that airs on NBC. It's yes. not going to be hard to figure out which one. 
And the season ended of that show. And a week later, my car broke down. So I was riding the bus to my restaurant job. <laughs> so I'm literally sitting on a like uh, on a Tuesday night. My name is scrolling on the NBC credits with, with that says the word producer near it, and I'm literally sitting on a bus with someone who's headed to their third job of the day, cleaning an office or something like that. And those those that's a job. My job is a job. We all have stuff, but people would look at me and go, "Oh my God, that writing thing! It's so oh, good for you. You find that you've made it. You've cracked it." There's no cracking it. No, the, no the, the weird it. thing is, even when I've had money, which I don't know, mm. even when I've had money, I feel like I need to act like I don't have money. Uh, yeah. Because because you, you're foolish to go like, whoa, look at all this money I got. You don't get weeks like that every year, so you really have to be careful. Um, and you you almost have to like, even when you have money, live like you don't have money. It's kind of sad, right? I I, I wish I'm nodding because <laughs> academically that's a good idea. Right. But if you saw me at Bridgetown a couple weeks ago, at Ooh, an, Bridgetown at an, Comedy Festival. Bridgetown Comedy Festival. I Amazing applied but did not get in. I applied but did not get in. Well, that air just got chilly in here. It got cold. It yeah. got cold. The only reason I brought it up is there was a semi-organized trip to a strip club. Uh, Portland has an amazing kind of like cool strip club scene. Portland, the birthplace of Suicide Girls, by the way. So, and they all have, kind yeah. of have that vibe. They yeah, kind of yeah, have yeah. that like it's an empowerment thing, whatever. But if you could see all of, I mean, me leading the charge, you know, throwing fistfuls of dollar bills on the stage, and a bunch of comedians for whom, you know, the last eight shows they did, they got paid in, in nachos, and here we are showering girls with money, as if, <laughs> as if we're somebody. You know, it's our one weekend of the year to be like, here you go, honey. And the best thing is they'll, they'll pick up all those quarters. Yeah, that's they yeah, do. Absolutely. They're bent over. A lot of Sacagawea gold coins out there. A lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of good oh, American man. currency. But right. so sure, live like, you, live like you don't have money, even if you have money. Well, where can people, before we get into the crash, uh, this week's crash, where can people find you uh, online? Uh, the, you know, best place, at TJ Chambers LA on Twitter. Um, I guess the at is kind of superfluous, but right. you, you know that is the thing. TJ Chambers LA, uh, and then and then your YouTube, you got and then, yeah, there. YouTube. It's also TJ Chambers LA is my YouTube channel. I think that's a good. Yeah. I should look up my own. You should YouTube look up what channel. your YouTube channel is. It probably updates you know some stuff. You just need to Google. You don't even need to know yeah, anything. Just Google. Although you'll find, um, I think, a motivational speaker from back east, also named TJ Chambers. Who He's has hilarious by the way? Well, weirdly appropriated somehow aggregated some of my stand up clips. Like he has a page and it's like TJ Chambers communicating. Here's some stand up that's also communicating, and then it's four or five of my clips. <laughs> He's not claiming there. that he did it. He's not claiming that he did it. He's just saying, Ugh. like, hey, this is a this is another me- mode of Ugh. communication that another guy does. That's so, so funny. Yeah, so enjoy, <laughs> enjoy that guy. Hire him to work your corporate gig. That could be fun. Um, well, great. I mean, we perform together. It will not be the last time. And indeed. maybe one time it'll be at Bridgetown Comedy uh, Festival. Or, I will or get the, in next there are many other terrific comedy festivals out there. there are, I'm, I hope to do more. It was a, a fun time. So, All yeah. right. Well, let's coordinate our schedules and make sure that happens. Sync it up. All right, TJ, thanks for being on the show. We're, we're gonna, we're, actually, we're going to talk after the clips, after you hear these clips from this week's Crash, which I was on a show called BertCast. Mm-hmm. BertCast, hosted by Bert Kreischer, who... I know Bert. Hilarious comedian. I yeah. know Bert. I know, the reason I know Bert is because my very first job in television, regular job where I was paid money, was on a show called The X Show, which was back in the late 90s. And The X Show was sort of this competitor to like The Man Show, which was like, which was like the worst because yeah. they were filming The Man Show on the same lot oh, as The yeah. X Show. And the X Show was sort of like, it was like The View with Dudes. And Bert was brought in. Bert, first of all, hilarious. If you don't know anything about Bert, you should listen to the Mark Maron episode with Bert Kreischer and also listen to other episodes of Bert Crash that Bert, I'm not yeah. on. But Bert was, he, de- he was the machine. He, he developed, he would develop this, I, I don't know if it was so much a comedy act, but this co- where a thing where he is such a party guy that he became famous in college for being known as The Machine. The Machine. So look up Burt Kreischer, The Machine, and, and you'll get the whole story on that. But um, uh, he's he's also uh, the inspiration for National Lampoon's Van Wilder is based on Burt Kreischer. On I don't know if you knew that. That persona. I did not. Exactly. He also has a, a show on Travel Channel called Burt the Conqueror. And on Burt Cast, which I, first of all, thank you, Burt, for having me on. And Burt also, such a great comic. He actually invited me to open for him, which I think oh, yeah. I'd have to really get my best... 10 to 15 yeah, yeah, to yeah. open for someone like Bert. Maybe so. he knew, maybe he thought, you know what, I've got some new material that's, that's maybe not quite where I want it to be. I'll get Chris Gore to set the bar 
medium ish. Yeah, I know. And that way, because Bert's a fucking hilarious guy, so if, he's going to vault uh, over that bar no matter where you sit. If you want your bar set at medium, give me, give me a call to open for you <laughs> if you're a famous comic. As someone who is these, on the lower rung of the, the ladder. These amps go to five and a half. <laughs> yeah, about, exactly. right, about halfway. <laughs> right, right. Um, so, so, uh, so the thing is about Bert, his, his comedy is so good. Other comedians have stolen his jokes. Hey, oh, yeah. I'm not going to get into it. But if you should ever want to listen to the Jay Moore episode of, of uh, WTF with Mark Merritt, you can get the whole story on that. Bert, Bert, Bert is a, a class act. He doesn't, he doesn't discuss this issue, but everyone in the comedy community kind of knows this story. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Jay Moore beat me in the category of best new podcast uh, for the Stitcher Awards. So fuck him. Um, all right. Now, so I went to Bert's house where we recorded Bertcast. Mm-hmm. And we recorded it in Bert's man cave. This thing is so cool. He was some TV show actually tricked out his um, his. He has like a back garage. Right. He has he has a button you can push that like a, like like a Bond villain. Like the the the, 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 the big screen opens Whoa. and he's got all these buttons on his desk. And he's, so we're sitting in his man cave, which is like it's we're talking about wood paneling that has that really deep deep yeah. stain yeah. and everything you could mahogany esque. I mean, Covered in just like manly stuff, right? So, so that's where it was recorded, and uh, we were just reliving. Bert was brought in to the X show, which I was on the X show for uh, I don't know, it was more than two years, two is and a half years. Quick interjection: Is that the one? Or is the X show the one? We have a mutual friend, Rebecca Corey. Did she used to do warm up for that show? That yes, that she show? did. Yeah. Rebecca Corey did warm up. Oh, I'd like and she to, did warm up for my other to show. Go back to my Netflix. previous shout out, and also shout out Rebecca Corey. She's a tiny dynamo of wonder, and she's a pug lover. Yeah, doing a lot. To, no, uh, pit, pit bulls. Pit bulls. That's she's right. Doing pit a lot bulls, to help. Yes. Pit bulls. Pit, yeah. bulls. pit bulls. Yeah. No, yeah. she's definitely into dogs. But no, I love Rebecca. Yeah. So she would do warm up, and then also she, uh, she, uh, well, it's a bunch of people that I met. It was my first TV experience. I no idea what I was freaking doing you know right. and and Bert was brought in really to kind of like make the show funny right. because it was it was the direction of it was like almost like the view and guys and talking about guy stuff and Bert was brought in like as the guy to really be funny and 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 elevate the show and uh it was i mean it was a blast just hanging around like watching all those guys interact because i was just the movie guy i would come out and do this movie segment then those guys would make fun of me every once right. in a while they worked me into bits but it was all like, humor at my own expense which is the be- probably the, probably the best kind of humor I because, think it's most of my humor is well, humor at my own expense. Because, it, but well, when other people have, throw humor at your own expense, that actually implies that they're paying attention. So it's kind of flattering. Ah, the fact I'll that they that. could even pick out something about you to laugh about means that they see you, Chris Gore. Well, they see you. I love Bert Kreischer. Uh, I love being on his show, and I'm happy to present these clips uh, from Bertcast. Listen to other episodes of Bertcast, also, not mm-hmm. just not just. But but uh, we had a great conversation, not just about just about comedy, life, about um, about getting in fights. We talked about what it was like to get in fights. Uh, so here, enjoy Bert Kreischer's podcast, Bertcast. Like they tried to put me on meds because because uh, it was also like it really definitely for a long period of time manifested itself whenever I had to fly. I had rituals. Oh, really? I had sincere rituals that I had to do, and I still do to this day. Oh, like what? Like what? Like when I walk on the plane, I have to find a a block of like right when I walk through the door on the door right to the right right there you'll see drill bits like drill like oh, oh, like really? rivets, and I've got to find a symmetrical block of. Five or six, oh, oh, like to no. make like a star, and then I do a little cross on the inside, and you'll see me. I mean, every every flight attendant's called me on it. Like it's made of steel. You're gonna be fine. Like I'm testing it out. I'm like, no, I'm fucking crazy. Then I have to say like, wow, yeah, and I I, I definitely have I'm to. I'm not drink. that bad. That's I, that's on flights. I'm just like for me, it just give me an aisle seat. I just, I, I have not gotten on flights because oh. I couldn't get an aisle seat. Forget it. I can't fly without an aisle. I get. I, I it's manifested itself bad on planes and like wow. Yeah, but and like I definitely. Have I wear the exact same clothes every time I fly? Like I have to wear jeans, boots. Uh, the I just What's I just with, retired. Well, that's fine. You I got just your reti- outfit. But I have a hoodie that I always wear. A lucky hoodie. The and, lucky hoodie. Yeah. Take it. And so and so and I'm also like if the second a bracelet goes on, it can't come off until nature takes it off. So the it's oh. the worst when my daughters are like, "Daddy, I got you a bracelet." And I'm like, "Motherfucker!" <laughs> no, I gotta wear this bracelet for like. <laughs> I've worn bracelets for like up to like a year, 
And then like, and do you just kind of rub it to, I, to try to the break it? No, just a little, you I, just, it has to be naturally. It's got to be natural, and and oh, yeah. So this, these are both uh, gifts from my daughters. Oh man, but uh, they're, they're gorgeous. Yeah, they're, great. It, they're both luckily the same color. So cute. So yeah, but I, it's not it matches I'm, your outfit. <laughs> I love this shirt, by the way. It's an this is awesome the shirt. shirt. The giant bear. It's like a picture of a bear. It's it. I got in a river, and it, yeah, you gotta keep talking. Instagram that. I'm just making sure we're recording. That's my biggest fear on these podcasts. What, what, that it's not recording. Yeah, uh, you know, me too. It's like, is it all working? I'm still paranoid with like with you know my show. Like everything's got to be just like functioning so wait, just right. So wait, I want. Okay, I'm really bad at. Let this okay. This, this makes you a good like, interviewer. This yeah. makes you a good interviewer, not knowing so, stuff. So we worked together on the X show. By the way, I ran into Jillian Barbary at like a Red Bull event. Yes. Um, she not only did not remember me. <laughs> oh my God. I have a similar story. Yeah, she didn't remember the X show. She, I can't fucking believe. I, I Yeah. X show was her thing. She came in once a week. Every Friday. She came in. Hot as shit. She was about to blow up. Jillian Barbary, for those of you who may not remember now, was uh, the big news anchor or morning anchor host on like the fun morning show in LA. She was the Fox weather girl on Fox Sports on Sundays. And she was like on Skating with the Stars. She was a big... I mean, she was... She was the biggest – she was our tent pole on that show because right, then we right. got canceled and they gave her her own show. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, but no, but she was on – and I ran into her at Comic-Con in San Diego and she was just amongst a whole group of people. I mean I was hanging out with like people in the industry. I looked right at her. I mean like as close as you are to me and we're like yeah. sitting on a couch next to each other. I'm, I'm looking at her and I'm like, hey, she looked past me to the girlfriend that was – behind me and wouldn't acknowledge me so not only did yeah. she not recognize me she was cunty towards me and it was she weird was, she's I, it I was think she's a mess i i do think she's a total mess i mean i, I hate to say that because she was i don't she, not that she knows who the fuck i am anymore but like yeah, exactly. she was really sweet to me when we did that show and she was i remember i i, I got in trouble a couple times and she always How'd came you get in, in trouble because because <laughs> yeah things. yeah we, I, I got in trouble a couple times too but it's mostly with the censor people oh no get yeah yeah ours well ours was like the fans hated me and Gary. What? Like one time but you we- were coming in to save the show because you remember yeah. there was a cast that was put together initially and there was a, a guy that like – I just feel like the audience wasn't responding to and you came in and you were a legitimate comedian. Yeah, and, you know, you and, the, and the I was, guy and I was, was to- raw. Like I was like – Bring in the funny, and, and it was like, but I think we were we were destined to fail because it was a daily live show. That yeah. was and competing against the man show. The man show was once was a week, once a week, way more scripted. They had field bits that were that were just really well produced. And I remember running into those guys, Adam Carolla and Jimmy Kimmel, like on yeah. there, and I couldn't say a word. I I would be like, hey, hey, like. I love your show because if you mentioned it that you love the man sucked. show, it sucked dick. Because when you worked on the X show, yeah. it was like you can. What do you mean the X show's so much better? Like you know, working it around sucked the producers. dick because you because since then, especially like I did stand up on Kimmel uh-huh. and like. I, like I, I bet he doesn't I, even remember the X show. No, he does. He does. Oh, I guarantee. Because we were on the I, same I, stage. Do you remember Hollywood I, Center Studios? We would I'm, like. Walk I can't. Through. I can't say that he does. And he didn't mention it to me. But I've heard an interview he did with Marin where he says he holds grudges. He remembers that shit. He remembers everything. And but he didn't hold a grudge with me. He <laughs> let me do stand up on his show. And I had I had heard through the grapevine that Adam Crow. I mean, they, obviously FX stole that show. They pitched it to FX. FX passed. They pitched it to Comedy Central. They bought it. And FX was like. Or no, no, Comedy Central outbid FX, and oh, FX okay. was like, "We want this show. Let's we'll just make our it. own." And so, and so, and it was their. First and we're project. not guilty of that. We're just the guys yeah. that are the but, performers. But I liked their show, hired. and they hated me. And I was like, "What well, sucks? I want to. I would like them to like me. I think I'd like them." Like, but you couldn't say anything. So I was like, "Ah, fuck it." No, that was the worst thing. Is like I'm a fan of the Man Show, watching it, going like, "God, I wish our show was more like that." Yeah, like, me more, too. The whole time, scripted bits. And, and I would listen to Carol on Love Line. And I, he's a fucking genius. Yeah, no. I was hilarious. like, man, Cr- Adam Carolla is the quickest wit I've ever seen. Kimmel starts his, his show. His book is brilliant. You ever read that book? No. Uh, In with, 50 one, Years We'll All Be Chicks? No. Brilliant book. I you would love it. I gotta fucking read it. I, you, I have you know what? Don't read it. Don't read it. Get the audio book. That's what I do. Really? I always get the I get the audio books of everything. Like I, because because it's cool. Because Corolla reads it. And here's what's funny is is he went to high school, couldn't read. He's a guy that can't read. You got to hear his is personal he story. Is amazing. It's he's not so much dyslexic as just he was a guy that like he. I mean, he played football in high school, but just like skated through with getting horrible grades. Really? I don't think he ever got his high school diploma. Like it was supposed to be mailed to him, and he didn't pick it up or something. <laughs> like he didn't get his high school diploma. So when he's reading his book, it's like. 
like so he's skimming it off the top of his head. It's 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 awesome. Like I love when because I've been reading a lot of these comedian biographies, and by reading yeah. I mean I buy them and listen to them. Yeah. So it's like Tina Fey reads hers, David Cross reads his, Pat Oswalt. Like it's Pat Oswalt's Pat Oswalt's I read and I was impressed at what a at almost uh, he's a wordsmith. Yeah, that's a wordsmith. what a writer. He what a, a brilliant a writer. writer he would have been in the 30s. Like, <laughs> right, right, like, right. Like, you know, like if comedy had not gotten in his way and, and, and <laughs> right, the only yeah. venue for that voice had been literature, like, you know, living in Italy and or, you know, wherever. He, man, he's a fucking amazing writer. Yeah, no, like, he's, he's a brilliant voice almost out of another era observing our current culture, yeah. which I love. So, like, I love his rants and essays. Who else too. have you read? I read Dimitri's. Uh, Tina Fey was, was good. Um, there was, uh, I don't know, the, I, I read about a lot of other books too. When I say read, I mean listen. And it's usually yeah. like who reads the book and then who – I mean I hope Audible is a sponsor of your show because this would be a great uh, place for plug. I don't have any sponsors. You should get a sponsor. Uh. Get a sponsor. You probably don't, probably don't need it. Probably I don't, don't need no, it I just – you know, I don't – I never I, – I, for me, I – I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say why I did. I have a meeting with uh, some people about sponsorship next week. Right. So maybe I'll. I don't know. I. I just. I have this. Uh, Does concept. it involve a barbecue grill or something? No. Is no. It something no. Good. I was looking at it like this is the way I. This is my envisionment, and I've already started the ball rolling. Right. I was like, you know what? Why not just me find a product that I want that I enjoy? Yeah. Much like Joe Rogan. Get does, one for free. His supplement, and then talk about it. No. No. And buy the company. Oh wow! And then just sell the product and own it, and if and it, and it be part That's of smart. So yeah, so I'm I'm trying. I'm in the midst of purchasing a vodka company. Oh my god, it's amazing <laughs> to, buy, to do machine vodka. See, I don't know if you've ever heard about my story when I got involved with the Russian mafia. And we I think I heard train. that. Like I heard your Marin appearance, yeah. and like, oh my god, there's just stuff like yeah. about you that like. And so amazing. and so and so I was like, you know, it's a, it's a good fit, and I like vodka, and I'm a big drinker, and the fans of this podcast are big drinkers. I go on the road, Robert Hartman. Well, you are the machine. Yeah, I am the machine. So we'll make machine vodka, and so it's it's machine extremely vodka. like vodka. Is this I, the first plug? Is this the inaugural plug? Th- technically, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked about. I talked about it on Rogan's, and Rogan was like, I will sponsor it every show, and I'll just fill wow. up his podcast with vodka. So if he ever wants Whoa. a drink, I'll drop. Of I, like I I just I buy into the dream I want the I want to have sponsor honor, my yeah. podcast is also we this is pod what, crash this is why not this is what happened is we had Sammy Hagar on the X show mm-hmm. and he had Cabo Wabo and he did the Cabo Wabo bikini girl contest right and he walked into all our rooms and he gave us a personalized bottle of vodka signed uh, or not vodka uh, tequila Cabo mm-hmm. Wabo and he very blatantly was like I want contestant three to win. Because me, and Gary, and Craig were the uh, uh, were the j- guests, the right, judges, right. and I was like, okay. And then, and he was like, that's it. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, well, you know, not everyone's as easy as you are. You and Gary seem pretty easy. The other guy's not having it. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> Craig does. That's not Craig, but that's me. I don't, on, I'm, uh, I'm so out mine. of the alternative scene that I don't even know. Yeah, what, I, mean, I don't even know what Meltdown was. Melt? No, no excuse me. Not, yeah, well, Meltdown is uh, the Meltdown comics. It's the Nerdist Theater. Oh, so it's not a Meltdown. It's not a okay. M Bar is just this bar. I mean, it was great though. Like, I also did a show at M Bar with Brody Stevens, who was the Brody. headliner. I freaking love Brody. And Zach Galifianakis was there, and he saw my set. He came in. He's got that like that poker yeah. visor <laughs> thing that he wears yeah. and sunglasses. He sort of sits in the back, like. Like, but it was, uh, that was, that was a fun show just knowing that he was there, exactly. but I'm all in the alt scene where, you know, where there's no pay, there's yeah. no pay. So I'm kind of here as like a wanting to reconnect, which is great. Yeah. And secondly, like I need your advice on my comedy career. Get on the road. Cause I don't have one. Get on the road. It's yeah. The th- yeah. Well, how do you even do that? Thing. But you, do you have a booker? Like, what do you do? Yeah, yeah, and well, this is for anyone in the audience. Like this is, this is, this is, is this is how broad we're getting now. It's just, we're talking, this is inside baseball no, stuff. It's, it's uh, there's millions of people. They're not millions. <laughs> let's just, let's put that in perspective. Yeah. Yeah. There's probably 50,000 people listening to this right now. Right. That, that, uh, <laughs> do you like how I'm very specific about right, exactly. <laughs> that? People. But I feel like there could be a whole podcast because I listen to a lot of comedy podcasts. Like obviously I listen to a lot of comedy podcasts and I feel like there's a whole <laughs> section of of the show every comedy podcast it's like one yeah. third of the show that is things comedians talk about between each other that oh, yeah. no one else gives a shit but, about but, but but a lot of people listen to podcasts a lot of the podcast fans are people that have aspirations to get on stage at one point in themselves yeah, well, and then yeah. that's why they've listened to comedy podcasts i i would be if i had a nickel for every time someone pulled me aside and they're like hey man i love you on rogan or i love you on marin or you know i uh, whatever podcast they heard me on and they're like you know i I'd, I'd love to get on, i'd love to start doing stand up do you have any advice i hear that all the time and so I'm, wow. am i always my my, my right. advice is 
the same that David Tell gave me was like, get out of the business now. Oh, is that like, what he said? Fuck yeah. It's, because it just, he's like, you think it's hard getting on stage? Whoa, wait, you try getting on the road? Wait, you try getting on headlining? Wait, do you start headlining? You try to start selling tickets? Wait, like it just gets more complicated. But the advice I'd give to any, I, that I have given to a lot of dudes in the alternative scene is get out, get out on the road and perform in front of strangers. Because right. when you go to Omaha, and you have a group of people that are that do not know you, have not seen you on TV, and do not care of your your uh, your uh, who you hang out with in LA or what your grooming is. It is a true testament to how funny you are, right? Because and and I'm not I'm not knocking by any stretch of the means the alternative scene because I've done uh like I've done bit I've done the alternative rooms once. Well, that's or twice. that's what inspired and, and, me. And, and, that's and, what inspired me actually to do comedy was seeing so many shitty alt comics. Yeah, we're just like, oh my god, okay, things that you like like I could literally do. Uh, I could come up with a whole list of things in alt comedy that well, I feel like are just the worst. Like it's, like it's, you're gonna find you're oh gonna find your hacks roommate in, you're story. gonna find hacks like, anywhere. You're repeating bullshit from your life yeah. on stage with those long winded you know sighs and pauses. That's not comedy. Yeah, that is venting. It's bullshit. Do that with your girlfriends over drinks there is Don't. but there's something to be uh, there's something to be uh kind of cold from that scene right. which is brilliant and which is the freedom that you see the the people that are doing it right on stage with and i'm and i'm not I, but once again i'm not knocking any part of that scene you, but you're going to find bad comics in every scene right, that you right. go to it's just is it's they do the hackneyed version of what they've seen people succeed doing. That's right, that is just right. simply how that's going to work out. You're going to find, yeah. you know, you're going to find dudes in the NBA that wear the arm sleeve when they saw Alan, Alan Iverson doing it. They're just hacks. They're just copying Alan right, Iverson. Right. So it's the same thing. And, and the, the the thing that the alternative scene offers that is genius and brilliant is a mm-hmm. free form style of comedy that right. is not yeah. specifically derived out of uh, these are the bits that the industry are biting into. They're talking very personally and openly about their lives, mm-hmm. and they're and they're going about it in a kind of poetic way. And I and I there are dudes that I've seen that are just genius. I have not seen Jonah Ray, but I heard Marin talk about him. I'm dying to see that dude. No, Jonah's great. Jonah's great. I, I, got I heard his new, him talk his comedy about. Album. I heard him talk about like whatever it was like. Some real open, honest thing he did at one of the shows that Marin was talking about, and I was like, "Dude, you know." In a lot of no, ways, it was great. It was great. No, no, Jonah, he is to me one of those top alt comics. Yeah, I, I'd love yeah. to see him. There's a lot of guys I'd love to see, but I, I just sim- simply am never around, so I don't get the opportunity. Well, I think he has he has the filter to go. This is a story worth telling. Yeah, because just because it's from your life doesn't make it worth telling. I've just seen enough bad, and that was inspired me. It's like you know what. I, people say, and it was it was the worst thing. I'd be at Home Depot, and I'm friendly to everybody. Why? Yeah. It's a better way to go through life. Yeah. Just be nice to people. Yeah. They'll be nice back to you. I want to reinvent not? the horn. Yeah. It's I simple. honked at the guy today, and he was like, "You're an asshole." And I was like, "I was just telling you, light was green. You were yeah, texting. Yeah. Like, yeah. why can't the horn just be a little more gentle?" Like, right? Like, like, I don't. I'm not the kind of guy that gives the finger. I feel weird about that. Yeah. I'm saying it's like you really have to do something that's like a, a horribly offensive yeah. for me to get like in your face about it. Like, it's got to be a line has to be crossed. But it's like, and I'm the guy that like if you honk at me, it's like I'm I made the I'm sorry it was you're right I was trying to get over and I almost I apologize yeah so but uh but but yeah like I'd be at Home Depot just being friendly people they're like are you a comedian I'm like no I'm just I'm just, just not I'm just not an I'm asshole just, you know it's e- we we're doing this transaction I am yeah. giving you money why not make it interesting for both of us and I will just make jokes about what is present in front yeah. of you know and 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 so so I, I was just like fuck that. I'm just gonna do it so Jonah said do the meltdown show it was my first time and then. I've been just getting as well, much stage time as I can that's, around. That's, and I haven't, that, and that's what's the beauty, beautiful thing about the alternative comedy scene. And despite – I know that I recently heard there was a gripe about money at UCB mm-hmm. with some comics. and But, you know – That's the, a whole the, different the whole, situation. Yeah, that, yeah, the, though, whole thing, like, though, the whole thing, though, that's great about the comedy scene is that they've opened a ton of rooms that people can get on stage. Yeah, at. see, I don't know that in – like that's a very complicated situation. But like I perform at IO West in an improv comedy group and I do my podcast live yeah. at, at IO West. In fact, I should have you on one of my live shows. Love to. Yeah. Yeah, so and Io's a great it's a, it's a great crowd they love but like I think it would actually be complicated for me to get paid because I know what the box office is bringing yeah. in. I have guests on stage and I have people that work with me. Am I supposed to pay any everybody? And then if I do split up the money, it's not going to be we're not talking oh, about what like yeah, 25 when 50 I, bucks each. When I do a set like, the then, improv, I get $13. Yeah, and like what am I supposed to do? Like okay, now I got to get a 1099 oh, fucking ass. And then, you know, like I'm currently on unemployment. So it's like I don't <laughs> then I'm going to have to like report my $13 of income yeah. to unemployment 
employ him at the EDD office. Like, I'd rather not get paid. I'd rather like if they're going to give me anything, just give me like a voucher for parking and drinks. Yeah, that's all. That's and all. And then like, that's all I be care about. But yeah. that's easy for me to say because I'm. Because, but you're an established comic. Well, yeah, yeah. And I, I am and, not. Like I'm not a young comic, and I'm not living hand to mouth. And we're like we're like thirteen bucks really matters when you're like fuck. I'd <laughs> right, love right, to right. get two beers, and those are my two beers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you know, so I, that's hard for me to say. And I and I or uh, two machine vodkas yeah, on, two machine with cranberry vodkas. juice, please. <laughs> So, uh, so, so, like, yeah, like that's the one thing the alternative scene has definitely driven is there's a bunch of great rooms and there's a bunch of kind of young cutting edge comics that are trying new stuff. And when you're around that, you're going to raise your game. Now, I would but say, I feel like LA is where you practice. LA, LA is should be practice. where you practice. It LA should, is where you yes. practice, and it's like, okay, then does it work in if other you rooms? You realize like, that every com there's thousands of comics in the middle of the country where LA is where they showcase. So where we practice is where a lot of people come out to showcase. Oh, wow. So like so there is this kind of double edged sword of like, yeah, it is where we're practicing, but at any given moment you could get a deal from a set you did. Or someone might see you and right. go put them in that movie. Well that's the thing is that's the thing that I like I've sort of been making this sea change in my career because people have known me as like, you're the movie guy and it's yeah. like I don't want to be the movie guy. I never yeah. wanted to be the movie guy. I want to be more of a writer, producer behind the scenes like you know, like I'm working on two animated shows. I'll show. Oh, we got a phone. Hey, <laughs> let's phone caller, it. caller number one. Let's see someone on the phone. Let's see. Is it some, it's someone. Is it someone good? It's it's Rogan. I don't know who it is. Let's find out. <laughs> let's see if it's someone we can put on the Hello. show. Hello. Oh yeah, hold on one second. <laughs> Should have taken this phone call. Give me two seconds. I'm sorry. Here you go, babe. All right, perfect. So that's what we're <laughs> so, um, so. Oh, I thought we had a caller. No, yeah, I think we're, I think it's about. It's but look, about, I'm a. I'm not a young comic. B, but I feel like also no when is, I see the no young, is, you don't want to be a young comic. No, no. But see, when I see the young comics, I'm like, oh, you haven't had things happen to you yet. You don't get it's a like, voice until you're. 40. I've been through divorce. I've yeah. got kids. I've had Dude. kids, and Dude. my kids are growing up. I look young enough. Like people, yeah. you know, with the exception of my hair, which is very Steve Martin esque. If you, if you want to show your support for Pod Crash, join Dollar Shave Club. We all shave. I like to shave my face. I shave other places too. Women shave. This is for everybody. Well, this will save you money and time by joining Dollar Shave Club. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Chris. Simple, high-quality razors, guaranteed, sent to you on schedule. Every month you get a new pack. I am signing up for this because that's a way that I can actually support my own show, which in a way supports me. So go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Chris. I've got that window of intelligence where Hollywood makes movies for me. Like, <laughs> yeah. They, I, I'm, I'm not. I like a good Hollywood movie. Give me a good I'm, one. Give I'm me just, robots beating the crap out of each other. I will go there. I'm not smart enough to know that Bruce Willis is a ghost. <laughs> I am dumb enough. I am just dumb enough. I'm just dumb enough to get it, to understand it in that five second window when the writer wanted you to understand oh it. Oh my god, it's so I've funny. I've got that. I've got that. That intelligence. Oh. That I'm sure it's like it's like probably one ninety to to one twenty IQ. Where you, where they write for you, where they're going, where they're going. Like I have a, bu- I had a buddy Hutch who could not figure out for the life of him who the fuck Kaiser Soze was. <laughs> like, he's like, why is the gimp walking regular? And you're like, that's Kaiser Soze. I mean, he watched it three times. Like I don't fucking get it. So like, but like but my intelligence to that. There's something to that where it's like I remember there was a certain point in my life. I remember when my kids were little, where I just like, I don't know, like I, I, I had to go. You know what? If I don't think about stuff so, so much. I think I'll be happier. Like, yeah. I actually made a conscious choice. Like, like you can actually make yourself miserable. I mean, there's like Nanny Hall, you know, little Alvy Singer, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, the sun's going to blow up. We're all going to be dead. Well, yes. If you think about anything too much, you will be a depressed, unhappy person. If you can just sort of dial back the thinking too much, and I don't mean that it's a, it's a bad thing. Just dial it back because then there, you could, there's so much more to enjoy, and you're not thinking about stuff that doesn't matter. I do that with my know? cell phone. You do that really? Yeah, like a year, well, probably a little over a year ago, I went through some hardcore drama with like a friend mm-hmm. that was really kind of upsetting and and very frustrating and 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 it made me angry. It made me like I was and I I couldn't really defend myself and I just kind of was like and it was very public and it was on Twitter and it was like fucking oh, wow. yeah and it was like it was like it was really a horrible, What's the horrible situation. Uh, <laughs> and so and so and but what was happening was is I was looking I was. I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm obsessing about it, and I haven't really done anything wrong. I, I was, right. I, I knew for a fact that when I took, I was like, in a month, I'm going to go. This has nothing to do with me. None of this has to do with me. I didn't do a fucking thing, 
And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to turn my phone off. I'm not going to look at tweets. I'm not going to look at texts. I'm not going to look at anything. I'm going to enjoy my family. I'm going to go for a hike to the Hollywood sign with my daughters. And I'm going to fucking tap the fuck out. I'm done with this. And I did. And I was the best thing I ever fucking did. And now when I go to like, like when we do travel shows and we're in Jamaica and I can't use my phone, I'm in. I find it's myself. Weird. It's weird. Yeah. Like, yeah, like when the power goes out, it's like. Wow, I kind of like not having devices it's that are amazing. distracting me. It's weird. You can kind of clear your head. I feel like I feel although like there is something there is something really uh, exhilarating when you get like a tweet from someone who's famous, then and then they tweet you, and you're like, "What? How does this guy know me?" And then you right. get excited. That yeah. feeling, that feeling is so like it makes your heart race, and you're like. <sighs> wonder, I wonder what the equivalent for that for was a caveman is like when he's just sitting in his cave and a deer walked in meat. front of his cave and he's like, shut the fuck up. It's right there. Free meat. Yeah, free meat. Free meat. Oh so, yeah, but but I – I yeah. get that when I like meet – I'll meet like other comedians and, and people in the industry and they, they know who I am and I'm – it's weird. Well, you've like, been in the business like for met, like 15 years. I met like – I met like uh, well, before that even, I did this movie magazine. Well, come to find out that my movie magazine, which was very humor-based, yeah. film threat, um, a lot of comedians – read it Frick, matt besser you know yeah uh matt besser pat noswalt yeah introduced himself to me at south by southwest when comedians of comedy first came out and i didn't know who he was and i thought oh my god you're hilarious in that movie but i didn't know his comedy previous to that oh yeah he's a killer then it followed his career like after that movie um you know paul f tompkins like people that i know like wow they know me from this magazine that i did that was a funny movie well, magazine you're and just, I like just the, only recently started doing comedy and just like the audacity of a cockroach or the whatever yeah, it the, is. the tenacity, tenacity of, a cockroach. of a cockroach you should read that book man it's inspiring because it's all these people who just basically they're all people that said, you know what? I'm going to do this DIY. It's a harder road to go, that but is... I have more control over my content career. It's not going to be mainstreamed in in a sense. And they always have the option to like, you know what? Someone like an Amy Mann can go, I'll, I'll do music for a movie. You know, she, yeah. she can sort of bump to other more mainstream things, but on her terms. And I feel like that reading that book really inspired me. It was right when I started doing G4 and I'm like, you know what? I'm doing things on my own terms. I'm not going to be groomed. I'm not going to be molded into an image. And I recently, what's so funny is I'm working with Gary are back on this show yeah. who you know we worked with yeah. at mindless entertainment to do x show and he starts to say to me in this meeting with peter billingsley like you know we saw your reel and all this we just want you to dial it back and i'm like okay that's cool like i will change the tone i can yeah. be serious i mean i can you know because you listen to a lot of comedy podcasts you know there are moments you get serious we're having yeah. serious conversation it's kind of dark yeah. then there are moments where it's like so we're laughing so it's like yeah. you tell me what the tone is i will i will i, I, I can do both i yeah. can do both i think it's what's great about comedy is is you know that like you can you can get into that kind of darkness. You can get into that's it's, it's not a surprise to me that so many comedians have transitioned to serious acting. I mean, you can because so much comedy comes from horribly painful things. Yeah. So he's saying to me, Gary says, "Yeah, um, so we just want you to like comb your hair." So comb my hair? You mean like change the hair? That's my so my hair is kind of my signature thing. Yeah, there and is, I'm like, yeah. and I said, not doing it. I said no. I said I didn't care about like if it wasn't the money, the schedule, anything. It's just like yeah. not changing who you know. You can change the tone because I can do both those. But you want to start to change me? You can't, you can't touch my face. Yeah, that that's kind of <laughs> just I, I definitely me. I definitely have problems with that. You can't taste, I touch my said, face. Like, you can get someone. You can get anybody else. I it's said, different. They go. It's you different if you're playing a character and they're like, you, we think this guy would have a mustache. That's one thing. I like, playing a character. Yeah, but if you're playing, if I'm playing me, yeah. like I've I've had, I've definitely come across that. Oh, really? Where yeah, people yeah, are like, yeah. They'll try just, and go. Just, well, can you just hip you? Wear, wear this shirt. Do this. I'm like, what? Why? Yeah, and so no, yeah, I like, so I can I can completely. But you know, here's the big thing. Like, and I'm I read this uh, article today about Ed. Do you know who Eddie Wang is? Mm-hmm. I think Wong. I'm saying it wrong. He's got a really cool show on Vice called Fresh Off the Boat. Um, and he just was a Ted. Oh, I've heard of that. Is that that Vice, Vice on, on the internet? Vice dot awesome. yeah, Vice yeah. is really fucking cool. Yeah. And uh, and then he did. He was a Ted speaker, and 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 it, I was ta- I was talking. I was reading this article about him that was a while back, and apparently, you know, he didn't. He got offered a cooking show, and he didn't want to change his voice, and so they the negotiations fell apart because he didn't want to lose who he was as a uh, his voice or who he was. And I was like. I was like, yeah, I was, I was definitely there at one point in my life, and I remember, I remember being that guy and being like, but then I think the older you get, you go, well, you know, I'm not gonna, 
I'm a lot more open. I'm a lot more amenable, uh, amiable, mm-hmm. am- amenable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, malleable. I'm You're a lot malleable, more malleable yeah. now. Like I, I like, but I think that's mostly because I'm a grown up and I have kids, and I'm like, and I'm like, my stand up will always be my stand up. I'll never. That's me. I write it. I perform it. But I'm the know, only but one. You also, you like, like in a room, you'll amend like depending on the audience. If you're doing all senior citizens. Yeah. You're gonna amend, maybe. But you don't want Anthony Bourdain or or Eddie Wong to change who they are because who they are that little freaking spark. That's why you're hiring. That's them. why you're hiring them. Right. So yeah, so so it, that was probably the wrong deal for him. But but for me, and I thought this when I started working to travel, I thought like I thought like I got to be edgy, I got to be. And then I worked there, and I was like, wait, this is a really fun job. This is just really funny shit. And I give them everything. I, I give them all of me when we're on set, and I do whatever I do. I'm gonna, I'm not doing someone else, and they use what they choose to use, and I'm cool with it, and I like what I do, and and everyone at that network's been a fucking amazing. They've never once said anything about my podcast, about my stand up. They told me literally, whatever you do for you is you, but when you work for us, when you're wearing a Travel Channel hat, when you're the guy on. Please just be respectful of our brand. Right, right. No, that I totally yeah. get. Like that is different than – I feel like because you can be you and respectful of the brand simultaneously. Yeah. But when they're telling you to like change yeah, that's, you yeah. – if, if I'm not playing a character because I have actually acted in, in stuff before. I play, So, okay, I, I wear glasses. Cool. I wear a sweater that I would never wear. Sure. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm playing a part. That's different. But like they're hiring me as the host and they're hiring me for my expertise. They're hiring me because of my rep. They're hiring me because I am – me, yeah. then I'm not going to change this aspect of me where people are going, why did he change his hair? Yeah. Like I already get people accusing me of dyeing my hair constantly. Really? Yes. Cause, cause I have a youngish looking face. Yeah. Like, you know, I've kind of a, a, a boyish face. <laughs> um, and I think it's cause, and I just tell people, and this is actually true. I was an indoor kid, you know, it's like I was an indoor kid while you were out hiking or yeah. playing baseball yeah. or doing sports. <laughs> uh, I was playing sports video games. Um, but yeah, no, I was, I was a kid that basically stayed out of the sun. Everyone was like, where aren't you going to be in ski club? I grew but, up in Michigan. I was about, I think I actually knew that. Yeah. That you grew up in Michigan. I don't yeah. Know how grew up I in Michigan. That. And I just, I was an indoor, I didn't, I was the guy who read, I was the kid who read comics. I was the kid who, you know, I, the, the thing I did biggest outdoors physical was I had three newspaper routes and that's how I had money <laughs> to buy a VCR. I had a TV and a VCR in my room and my, my, my mom didn't. You know, so I would be recording. It's like, no, mom, get your own VCR. I paid for this. What if my goal is to lose the crowd? What if that is? It's uh, never your goal. It's never your goal. <laughs> it's because it's it it like it's like Harmony Crin tried to do that movie where he got beat up because right. he thought and he just and he was like I've highly underestimated how quick a fight is when you don't know how to fight. <laughs> so, right, right. Like, yeah, it's usually one yeah. two punches. A couple. You're tired, really. Like yeah. really tired, not from the punching. I think. Well, actually, from the punching, but also the the adrenaline. Like oh, it's yeah. just like adrenaline. I've only been in a few fights in my whole life. They all yeah. ended with. With me bloody and uh, like and then fight. going like oh this was so dumb there's either there's I, and then anyone... you end up being friends after with the person you're always like oh not me oh, oh not well it depends never... on what the fight was over oh i've, I've but... been beat up a couple times and i've never been yeah. friendly with them afterwards and I mean, and I've won fights, but the I got to be honest with you, I'd rather get beat up than win a fight, right. only because I'd rather not get in a fight because the other yeah. thing they don't tell you, your hand really hurts when you punch bone. Yeah. Like, and doesn't it hurt? Like, you're like, ow, my hand. Sadly, I haven't had that uh, experience a bunch. But, <laughs> oh, you were probably, but, you know what? You were drinking machine vodka. <laughs> I was I was definitely, like, the fights we got in were, like, just, like, in high school, you get in fights, and it was just huge scraps, and the fact that you were in it was part of the fact that you were, like, that you were a man. It's like, right, like, right. And so I've hit a few people a few times, but most mostly I've... The one fight I did win, the depression I had the day after was so great that I was like, I did that to somebody. Like that and guy did didn't. You feel, and you felt bad about I it. I felt bad about it, and I was like, Did you ever talk to that person? No, and try I and, still haven't spoken to that person. You should have them on their podcast. No, I've, I've I've beaten up. Uh, beaten up's a fucking horrible word. I've I have not lost two fights, and both fights. I was like, I, I was an a, I was an asshole. I mean, obviously, so you deserved like, that you were being a dick, or you said I get you no, or, or it was or like you just say in someone's face, or like, they, it, they got in my face, and then I got right, right. and then I got One back in their face, and then I saw the weakness of like, oh, and I'm sure that's how a fight. I'm sure that's how everyone wins a fight, but I saw the fact that this that I, as I got back in the face, maybe nothing would happen. I was like, if I punch him, I might win, which is how all fights. The first few right, right. that punches, someone usually wins. Right, right. And both times, the depression I felt the next day was so great that I was like, I will never do that again. And then the fights I lost, there was a depression that sunk in too because you're like, 
oh my god. But in both in the fights that I lost, I never deserved oh. to be in the fight in the first place. Oh my god, I was in a, a near fight recently that I regret not getting in the fight. It was right out. It was on Hollywood Boulevard on Saturday night during Halloween. And it's crazy, of course, everybody. This guy was getting in my girlfriend's face. Yeah. It was weird. And I just said, hey, man, it's my girlfriend, whatever. And like, and you just, I was like, hey, lay off, lay off. He was like getting in my face. And then like, I knew the one thing you know about fighting. This is the one thing I know is always look in that person's eyes. I'm not yeah. taking like, I, the, the hands will be like in my eye, but I'm looking at the person's eyes because I can tell by the eyes when he's going to throw a punch. Yeah. You can tell by the eye, right? Am I wrong? Like I don't know. I've, 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 I've been punched been too many so- times to be like. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the one thing I knew was, okay, if I'm going to avoid getting punched, which avoid – if I'm going to throw the first punch or avoid getting punched, which you're right. The first, yeah. Like I need to be locked in that person's eye line. You need to be so focused I'm, and ready to fight distinctly. Right. So I put up my hands because I thought, oh my god, this is going to a fight, so I've got to do this. Put up my hands and I'm locked in his eyes and I'm looking at his eyes and I know when he's going to punch. And he threw a punch. Threw a punch at me. I knew it was coming. I went like – he missed me. He swung and missed me and punched my girlfriend in the face. Shut and, up. And because I was so locked on him, I didn't see that she got – she was like right here. We're oh like this. God. He swings, misses me, punches her. <laughs> She's over here. <laughs> this I, is like a comedy I'm routine. I'm completely unaware <laughs> that she has been punched. I'm completely unaware. And then all the, the security from like the comedy club comes out and they're pulling us apart. And, I, and the whole time as we're me pulled apart, I'm like this. I'm like this yeah. with his eyes. I'm locked in the eyes. I'm locked in the eyes because I'm like, <laughs> you try and throw a punch again. You said, and it's like they knew and it, it was my <laughs> turn to throw the punch. People are holding us back. There was like it was the guys at the valet and the security. They're they're holding us apart, and they they eventually like they 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 struggle this guy to the ground. Like, look, you're going to be arrested by the cops or leave now. And and so I'm sitting here like this, unbeknownst to me, she's on the ground. Like, oh my, and her jaw. That, her jaw was and you all see her and, you, and, and I'm like, like, holy shit. I felt so horrible <laughs> because it. I failed her. I failed her. I failed her. And the, like, okay, yes, I didn't get punched. I, I, I got this guy who was being an <laughs> asshole away from her. But but she got punched in the face. It she was, was – like, did you see that? She's like, what? Oh, yeah. I ducked and the punch. She, How cool is that? And she's yeah. like, I didn't see it. Oh, how the fuck did you miss that? I, know, I couldn't believe it. Like I'm telling you, like, you know, from my point of view, it's like, hey, I went – and then, it's, and then I, when I realized I failed, I felt – horrible like the next day like how do you apologize for that and she even felt bad about how bad i felt yeah so it was like oh my god i mean she was and she'd be i'm like how was your jaw and it was like the next week that uh, is, it's all it's okay it's okay that is so fucking oh yeah, no, my I, god i ducked i've ducked uh i've ducked two punches in my life i was, was proud of myself that like i had that like that i don't know it's just the, the the what do they call that you know the instinct the the cat-like reflex the cat-like reflex yeah the reflexes to just like like I and it was just from keeping locked eyes. I saw yeah. it coming. It was great. I, I ducked I was a proud punch. of myself. Ralph Dupree threw a punch at me in high school, at, on the basketball courts, and I and I ducked it. And it was the baddest. It was a it was a fucking. The it's like out of a thing. movie. It's out of a movie. When yeah, you yeah. duck a punch, there's no cooler feeling than uh. poof, and you're like, miss me. And <laughs> he fucking swung for the fences. He would have knocked me out, and I fucking oh ducked it. And I was like, that's up. That's what's up, bitch. And then the next the next time, and then and then I had some balls on me. I got in a fight with this black dude. I talked about it on stage in my hour yeah. special. This black dude named Donovan, and I was in high school, and it was and he was a good fighter. He literally he be he did beat me up technically, right? But but uh. But there were a bunch of other black dudes around, and I was afraid to fight because I was like, what if I fucking – what if I do knock him out? Do I think that 19 other black guys are going to be like, congratulations, right. you win. <laughs> right. So you bested him. <laughs> so, um, so, But he threw the first punch he threw. I ducked, and uh, and I ducked too hard and hit my nose on my knee and broke my nose. <laughs> yeah. I was like, smack. And I was like, motherfucker. And he missed and was like, I'm winning? I haven't even hit you, and I'm winning? So yeah. But, but then you had the bloody nose, which is the worst. The craziest is – I've always wondered – I've always wanted to get – I've always wanted to get into like – like if you ran into that dude again, would you recognize him? Uh, probably not because it was Halloween and he was – we were all in costume. Like everyone was in costume and it was like, you know, just, it's yeah. it's that drunken Hollywood. You, you got like to – Boulevard gets – You got to fly under the radar. That's the other thing that I do. Like that's the, I don't think I'd recognize him actually. The, no. in, the, in the – in like the – especially doing the road because when you do the road, you are – putting a point of view out for a bunch of strangers and then you're drinking with those strangers and you're going out to bars and you might have pissed someone off and if you go to a bar that maybe someone saw your act and they all didn't of these like, things excite me and sound fun it's well you gotta like some 
guys, and I definitely was a lot louder when I was younger, but like they go out and they're like, fuck it, and they comics and they're on the road and then they get in fights at the bars. I mean, there's a very fam- famous story about Mike Young getting, uh, not, and Mike Young's a good friend of mine, getting knocked out, like they broke his his cheekbone. And at a at a bar, just sucker punched him because they're like, "That's the fucking guy." Ugh, and it was like he was I, hitting on a girl. Is the worst hitting thing. on a girl, and it was Ugh. in West Palm. It was a nightmare. But so he was hitting on a girl that had a boyfriend. Had a boyfriend, and the, she had seen the show, and the you boyfriend got an instinct for that stuff. It's you got and an so instinct. you got to fly under the radar and be like, and be like, you go to a club, and it's like you can't get too fucked up because you gotta, you gotta like. You got to be aware around aware and you of your might surroundings. You walking home with like a chunk of change in your pocket too. Yeah, like, and you don't. And I don't want like I have no interest in. I have no interest in getting in a fight whatsoever. I will cower to a man simply on the fact that I go, yeah, but neither of us are going to jail tonight, and neither of us are going to the hospital, and you don't you don't accidentally hit me and my head hits a curb and I get go sent and I get and I die and you go to prison for the rest of your life. You're yeah. not thinking about that, but I definitely am. I yeah, definitely yeah. am. You reach a certain age and you're like, yeah, fighting is pretty dumb. I'm fucking forty years old. I got two kids. I got a mortgage. I got all I want to do is come home after this weekend and see my kids on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then go back on the road. That's right. it. That's fucking it. So like, and it takes a lot to get me to the point where I'd ever fight a dude. I'd probably fight a friend before I'd fight, you know, like, but I don't, yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah. But when it, uh, to me in defense of someone else too, is sort of, if, like, if it will, that's, in that that's situation, that would, that would, if, if, if someone hit my wife, someone else, if someone just, hit my wife on accident, Oh, I, yeah. and, and I and I had seen it. Obviously, I would lose my fucking mind. Now, yeah, on the yeah, other yeah. hand, if my wife had gotten hit for starting some shit with someone, I'd be like, "Honey, that's what you get." I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. My well, wife, she was, my she wife, was completely innocent. She wasn't starting anything. No, no, no. Anything. My wife's talking shit to strangers before, and I'm like, "Listen, you, unless you've been taking jujitsu classes, <laughs> yeah. we need to have a conversation because I'm not fighting this guy." I feel like women are way more into wind people up. Because I feel like they're not as likely to fight. It sounds like a sexist oh, thing to not say, even, but not like, likely. They will not fight. Right, right, right. Like a woman. Here's another thing: a woman will I will slap a dude yeah. that slap, she doesn't right. know, slap him or swing on a guy that she doesn't know because she gets so worked up. Right. And whereas whereas at that same level, sometimes a guy may a guy may a guy may and maybe it's not sex. Maybe it's just the type of person. But I've seen women hit men that are bigger than them and i go i would never hit a man bigger than me i would never get so upset but an, a, a man bigger than me would never take that shit right, he'd just right, right. drive me into the ground right whereas right, a woman right. can't get hit so like they'll just fucking swing on it you know swing on a dude that i, I just go I, oh my god are you out of your fucking mind i really want to thank Bert kreischer for having me on the show um not just a great comedian a great human being Great, uh, just just a great family man. Yeah, a great like I, I don't know, just like um, just a com a comedian that I fully respect as a person uh, and, and and a professional. Good so, shout out. Good yeah, shout out. Love Bert Kreischer. So follow him, Bert Kreischer. That's B E R T K R E I S C H E R on Twitter. Find Bert Kreischer on Facebook and go to bertcast.com for all things. Burton. Yeah, you the man, BK. God, I love him. I'm all about the acronyms today. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So, TJ, now you you are familiar with Bert's humor. You're familiar with like are there other comedians out there that you're you're, you're loving and enjoying? At the yeah. Moment? Oh man, uh, it's, it's been a, a great couple of months for catching people's shows. And right now, I just I saw a couple times within the span of a short period of time, Chris Fairbanks, uh-huh. uh, who, if you know, is probably the most able to get me to even shut off my comedy brain and just laugh as an audience member. If you have not yet seen Chris Fairbanks, I think he he was, I, I want to say he did Last Comic Standing, but uh, just a hilarious stream of consciousness, kind of almost planned chaos, mistakes that turn into amazing comedy. So uh, watching him has been a delight. Uh, it's one of those like, wow, that's, I need to keep working to achieve those levels. Chris Fairbanks up there. Um, Jim Hamilton, one of the best joke writers out there, uh, has a, a, a recent album whose name escapes me, but a great uh, Fallon set recently. If you check out Jim, Jim Hamilton's Fallon, very funny guy and very amazing kind of one-line comedy writer. Uh, so those, yeah, those are some of my favorite. Oh, you know when um, Cameron Esposito for like uh, crowd work. If you ever watch Cameron Esposito, she's a, a, a hilarious Chicago comic who's now out in L.A., um, you rarely see people do crowd work in a way that makes the crowd feel like delighted and loved. And uh, Cameron is so much fun because she'll, you know, she'll she'll go through seven, eight minutes just talking to people about their day or whatever. And not in that whole, I'm going to stick it to you audience member way, but in a, isn't it great fun that we're all at a comedy show together way. 
So those are a few that, that I'm loving right now. Shout-outs to you guys. So I, I love that, that that you have all this passion for these new people because yeah. these are all people now that I'm gonna, I have to look up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out, and, I'll, and I'll, you know, I'll tweet out all their, their Twitter handles or whatever. But I do feel like I'm making my mark on the L.A. comedy scene as an audience member. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think that's probably maybe where my talent really lies. Well, we got we to gotta do, you know, because we performed in L.A. together. We, we should perform outside of L.A. together. Yeah. At, so, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that we could arrange There's this. a great crucible of, you know, about three hours outside of here in uh, San Miguel, California, which is Paso Robles adjacent. Mm -hmm. There's a great kind of one-nighter, like honky-tonk bar nightclub that's a, just an awesome pail of cold water in the face when you've been doing comedy in L.A. for too long and you think, like, man, I'm really... I'm hot stuff over here. People are loving these jokes about NPR and, and Morse code that I'm doing. And then you go out there and it's just... It's like an army base and farmers. And you learn, oh, shit, I need... I need to uh, uh, relate to the people. It's right. uh, wonderful. So we'll try to get out there. Sometime. We should we should do that. We could do a show where we open for each other. Ah. So like you do ten, and then I'll come out and do ten, and then I'm also opening for you. You're opening for me. Then 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 we double. We just keep opening. The inception of comedy shows. In the, the inception of comedy yeah. shows. We just do. We just we just sort of tag team it. We right. just tag out. Right. Boom. Like then, and go. then you do another ten. I do think the best thing for a comedy show is to keep it as confusing as possible. From a format scenario. Right. Really keep people on their toes. Yeah. You know, so that they never get settled in. Yeah. I yeah. like it. I yeah. like it. We, All right. we, should, we should try that out. And I uh, should let you know that Podcrash is part of the Sideshow Network. You can go to sideshownetwork.tv to check out other shows. Uh, also, uh, follow me on Twitter at that Chris Gore. Follow the show at Podcrash Show. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash podcrash, where you find all sorts of information about different uh, upcoming other live events with Podcrash and or myself. Go to iTunes, please. Give us a five-star review. And, oh, I should let you know, uh, by the time you listen to this, or actually maybe a week or so later, you'll be able to get, there's a Podcrash app. There oh, is yeah. now a Podcrash app for Android uh, in, the, in the Android shop, and then also on uh, iTunes for iPad and, and uh, uh, iPhone, you can get a Podcrash app. Is that, that's crazy. We, I have an app now. A lot of people I now have an app. I've heard it described, a Podcrash I've app. Heard it described as the bang with friends of podcast apps. It, it is. That is, that is my slogan. Me. You can blurb me on that the, one. The, the bang with friends of, of podcast apps uh -huh. is the Podcrash app. Uh, so uh, thank you all for listening. One, uh, yeah, and, and TJ, thanks for do, being on the Show. Sure, sure. Oh yeah, my god, yeah. Chris, let's get out of here. I want to tell you my secret now. Okay. I see dead people. Hey. If you're still listening to this, you're probably a lot like me. You're the kind of person who likes to hang out at comedy shows and discover new comedians. And if you like to do that, you and I are a lot alike, and I like you. For that, you shall be rewarded. Send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Podcrash with that Chris Gore, 5042 Wilshire Boulevard, PMB 1500, Los Angeles, California, 90036. You'll receive in return the Podcrash Fan Club Kit. It's absolutely free. And if you keep listening, you'll hear a bonus piece of audio from BertCast. Later. Dane, yeah, Dane is, Dane is, an, he's a really interesting dude and he's always been nice to me. I've never had, I've actually never had a problem with Dane ever. Um, well, but I don't know him. I just know that everyone cool. dislikes cool. him and I've defended him just because I'm like, you know, it's sort of like the, the reason I like defend like, like not so much the recent, but early Adam Sandler movies. It's like, I like Adam Sandler. I like Adam Sandler too. I like Adam Sandler. I also like independent films. Yeah. I like foreign films that, that, where I have to read subtitles. I my taste is very broad, so I like some of the lowest of the lowbrow. Yeah, uh, but I also happen to like you, you know I like a I've good got, steak. 